Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from ASRock. This is the ASRock Z77E ITX. Now there's a lot of information that can be derived from a motherboard's product name. So simply, simply by looking here we can tell this is a Z77 chipset motherboard. It's a mini ITX form factor which means it's very small. And uh, the Z77 chipset is of course based uh, is from Intel and that means it's a socket 1155 motherboard. It will support Intel uh, Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. Both the second generation Sandy Bridge as well as the third generation Ivy Bridge uh, based processors, as long as they're 1155, will be compatible with this particular motherboard. It's also featuring the uh, ASRock 555 XFast system. And in case you're wondering what exactly that is, well, there's more information on it back here. First off, XFast RAM, that gives, that's some software that will let you set up a RAM disk, and uh, by loading off of that, you can get much faster application performance. Uh, you also have XFast LAN, and that's going to prioritize your packets to give you faster, uh, particularly for gaming, it's going to shape your packets and prioritize the ones that need to have better prioritization. And then finally, you have uh, 5X USB, so that's going to be, uh, some again, some software that will boost your USB performance as you're transferring your data back and forth. Apart from that, uh, some other specs of this board, uh, by virtue of uh, the iGPU that's in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor, as well as the chipset, uh, you get stuff like Virtue MVP, so that will allow you to virtualize your GPU, so if you're using a discrete uh, graphics card, you can also output via the uh, built-in uh, video outputs, and uh, you can sort of switch back and forth between that. That will give you access to uh, VSync. Uh, I'm sorry, that will give you access to virtual VSync, switchable graphics, high performance, uh, that will allow you to use the uh, fast uh, video encoding features of the iGPU in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, you also have Intel Smart Connect technology, uh, Intel Rapid Smart technology. They're using high quality premium gold caps on this motherboard. Some other features down here from ASRock uh, Digital Power Delivery, ASRock OMG, which I think is a pretty funny ac ac acronym. It actually stands for Online Management Guard in this particular uh, instance, and that's going to allow you to uh, establish internet curfew or restrict inter internet access at specific times. So if you're going to be using this for a, a kid's system, for example, you can use that. Uh, internet Flash will allow you to update your, your UEFI directly from the internet. You get an MSATA connector on board. It's currently uh, in use by the, uh, the built-in Wi-Fi card, so 802.11 uh, and Wi-Fi card that's integrated. Uh, also gives you an MSATA option if you do want to switch over to an SSD. You can do that. Uh, you get PCI Express Gen 3 support if you're going with an Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, some other uh, software that's included right there. On the side here, we actually have the uh, detailed specs listed off. I'm actually going to be showing you these in just a moment, but if you want to take a quick pause, you can read those off. Inside the box, we have some more information on that Virtue MVP software that I already mentioned on the outside of the box. Some more information on the 555 XFast utilities that I also already mentioned on the outside of the box, but there's some more details if you want to read up on those. We have some included uh, documentation here. So first off, you have your quick installation guide. This is going to be your full manual. Uh, you also get the ASRock uh, utility and driver disk. It's best to head over to the ASRock website to download the latest versions of these drivers because the ones on the disk are probably outdated by the time you get them. Inside the uh, manual, you have important stuff such as all the included components on the motherboard as well as some important information such as uh, which DDR3 slots to install your memory to depending on whether you're going with single or dual channel. All the important things, keep that on hand while you're doing your build. You also have a software setup guide, so the included software utilities will give you a walk through those. You get an input-output shield here. Uh, all of the inputs and outputs are labeled and color-coded, and it's black other than that. We also have, there's an included uh, Wi-Fi adapter on this motherboard as I already kind of mentioned at the beginning. So they've included an antenna for that. Uh, looks like it is a dual band router as it does have dual antenna. They go into the same uh, antenna base right here. This is just a base for the antenna, so if you want to give it a nice home to set, to sit down and position it so it will give, uh, give you good reception. There you go, so 2.4 gigahertz antenna, like so. Next up, we have a DVI to VGA adapter. So uh, if you do have an older VGA monitor, you can use this uh, via the DVI out on the back of the motherboard to plug that monitor in. Those things are sometimes useless, and then when you really do need them, you can never find them. That's what I discovered recently. <laughs> 
but not completely useless, so they are handy to have around. Uh, you get a couple serial ATA cables. Uh, they are both black. One of them has a 90-degree uh, shaped L bracket on one end. The other one is straight plugs on both ends. These are all going to be SATA Revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so you should be able to use them with your SSDs or other add-on drives that you might get. That looks to be about all that we have as far as accessories. So next up, let's take a closer look at this motherboard. As mentioned, it is a uh, mini ITX form factor motherboard. So it measures just shy of seven inches by seven inches, six and three quarters uh, this way and this way to be more specific. Uh, and uh, let's just start off from the bottom. We'll work our way towards the top. So down here at the bottom, we have a full length PCI Express X16 slot. So uh, if you're looking at a mini ITX motherboard, there's a fair chance that you're looking to build a smaller system. Uh, so this is going to be great for use in a lot of uh, home theater PCs, for example. However, with this full length X16 PCI Express slot, uh, fully compatible with Gen 3 as well, if you're using a Ivy Bridge processor, uh, you can easily add on a, a discrete graphics card and build yourself a nice and tidy, but also powerful uh, mini ITX gaming system. Uh, apart from the PCI Express X6, X16 slot, you've also got a uh, front panel audio connector right there. Over here on the right side, you have your front panel uh, power and reset uh, headers as well, so you can connect those up to get your power and reset buttons up on the front working as well as your LEDs. Uh, to the right side of the socket, you'll notice these two long slots, which uh, go pretty much the length of the motherboard. Those are your DDR sl memory slots, DDR3 I should say more specifically. It is dual channel, so you're going to definitely want to install a set of two. You can do up to eight gigabyte DIMMs uh, per slot, so that gives you a total capacity of up to 16 gigs total that you can have installed on the board. And uh, it does support memory overclock speeds up to 2800 plus, that's overclock. Uh, official support from Intel for uh, the Ivy Bridge processor is going is to be up to 1600. And it does support Intel's XMP Extreme Memory Profiles, so you can plug in your memory set settings and get those running as quickly as possible. To the right of your DDR3 slots, you have your main 24-pin motherboard power connector, so that's where the power from your power supply plugs in. Uh, you have another 8-pin power connector that's over here to the left of the socket, so those are your two main power connectors from your power supply for the motherboard. Um, I'm going a little bit out of order here, but uh, up here on this top right area, we have a couple 4-pin PWM fan headers, so this one here is going to be for your CPU. You can also uh, plug in a case or chassis fan header right there as well, 4-pin uh, for both of those, which is very nice. Uh, you can also use those, for example, to do push-pull configuration uh, if you go with a water cooling, uh, like a closed-loop water cooling solution for your CPU, for example. Uh, clear CMOS jumper right above that. Uh, to the left of that, we have a 20-pin USB 3.0 connector right there, so you can use that to connect uh, front panel USB 3.0. Uh, that's going to be natively controlled by the Z70, Z77 chipset as well. Right below that, you notice this little sticker that's on top of your BIOS chip. Uh, this has a single BIOS, uh, but or I should say UF, UEFI actually, um, but you do have that swappable chip, so if uh, something should go terribly wrong, you do have the option to get a replacement from ASRock, and they will send that out to you so you can uh, switch up your BIOS. But again, that should be very rare circumstances that that actually happens. To the left of that, you have a couple USB 2.0 headers here and here, the black ones. Below that little gray header right there is an infrared header. Uh, below that, you'll notice with the ASRock logo, you have a dedicated heat sink, and that's for your Z77 chipset. They've vertically mounted the, uh, the UEFI battery. That's, again, just to save a little bit more space. Now, the Z77 chipset is uh, handling a lot of the uh, connection for a lot of the peripherals and other components uh, b between the CPU and, and those components. Uh, primarily, it's got a serial ATA uh, controller built into it. That's your native controller, and that's going to be the fastest connections possible. Uh, your SATA 0 and SATA 1 connector ports right here are SATA Revision 3. So these are going to be your fastest ports. So if you have an SSD, definitely plug it into those gray ports right there. To the right of that, you have a couple SATA Revision 2, uh, 3 gigabits per second ports, still natively controlled by the Z77 chipset. Uh, all these serial ATA ports are capable of uh, the Intel, or are supported by Intel Rapid Storage technology. Uh, they're capable of RAID configurations as well, which I believe, but let me double check. Yes, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10 across those. Now, if you're familiar with the Z77 chipset, you know that there's actually a couple more uh, Serial ATA Revision 2 ports available, and they actually have made use of these. One of them, if I can show you guys real quick, is back here, this red port on the back. That's an eSATA 
uh, port, uh, also SATA revision 2. And then the other one, which is kind of sneaky, and uh, actually I need to do a slight correction here because I mentioned in the, uh, in the unboxing at the beginning that you do have a uh, dual channel Wi-Fi card that's built in right there. That's dual channel, not dual band, but it is 802.11N com compatible. Uh, that is a dedicated slot, so you don't need to remove that because they've actually gone ahead and hidden very sneaky. There's another uh, MSATA port right there. So MSATA on the back, this is also connected to your Z77 chipset. SATA Revision 2 compatible, uh, but if you want to do a sneaky little thing like get an MSATA SSD like this one that I have right here, you simply pop that in like so. And uh, I really like this configuration because it means that you don't actually need to sort of have a separate discrete like SSD or hard drive that you have your, uh, your operating system on. You just pop in one like that, use a little screw to secure it down, and then you've got an SSD integrated into your motherboard, and it's very nice even that it's connecting via the uh, directly to the Z77 chipset. Uh, also on the back here, just a quick look since you guys are probably interested, the PCB itself is a very dark brown color, sort of a slight gloss finish to it. Let me just flip back over here to the front, and we shall continue. So there's all your serial ATA connectivity. Uh, let's see, we mentioned the Z77 chipset, we mentioned the power connectors. Uh, there's your uh, dual channel uh, 802.11 BG or N Wi-Fi card that's uh, installed right there. A couple little leads uh, which run all the way through here to the two connection points on the back and that's so you can connect that dual channel antenna. And uh, that pretty much does it for the front of the, of, uh, the board. I should mention, there's your socket, in case you guys didn't notice it already. 1155 socket, again, Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge CPUs will fit in there. Uh, with Ivy Bridge, you do get some added functionality, such as the PCI Express Gen 3 support. And finally, you have your power delivery section right here with another dedicated heat sink to provide cooling for those components. Flipping around here to the I.O. on the back of the motherboard. Now they've got a nice arrangement integrated here. So first off, you have a, a combo PS2 port there. That's for a mouse or a keyboard. You also have uh, four USB 3.0 ports. So the blue ones here, as well as the blue ones here. The ones on the left here are controlled by an uh, Asmedia add-on chip. The ones on the right here are also natively controlled by the Z77 chipset. Uh, here are your connection points for your uh, dual channel Wi-Fi antenna that I showed you guys in the unboxing. You also have your video outs right here. And again, that's going to be uh, act accessing the integrated GPU or iGPU uh, in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. So bear in mind these will only be active if you have a uh, processor that has one of those, which is most of them, but there's a few uh, SKUs that don't, so bear that in mind. Uh, you've got your dual link DVI out that can do up to 2560 by 1600 resolution. You will also have DisplayPort out, uh, you also have HDMI out, and then uh, you can do an analog output if you use that included uh, DVI to VGA adapter. You have a surface mounted clear CMOS button right there so you can easily reset to uh, your UEFI to the default settings. A couple more USB 2.0 ports. There's the aforementioned uh, eSATA Revision 2 port. Uh, you have uh, gigabit Ethernet provided by Broadcom. And then finally, uh, you have an optical Toslink uh, audio out as well as all of your analog uh, outputs as well as your microphone input for your uh, audio. And your audio solution is a Realtek ALC898 audio codec. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the ASRock Z77E ITX motherboard featuring the Z77 chipset as well as the 1155 socket for Intel second or third generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.